This video is brought to you by ChemPower, the reliable, quick, and scalable EV charging solution for everyone and everywhere. And this video is also brought to you by StarCharge, the largest EV charging manufacturer in the world. They are also a provider of residential and commercial battery storage with microgrid solutions. Hello and welcome to another Out of Spec Reviews video. You join me for the full tour of CES 2024, where I'm gonna be taking you through all of the electric cars and EV charging equipment on display. You guys know what we cover on this channel, and I'm gonna be taking you around to literally show you hundreds upon hundreds of different products. You'll get my raw impressions. Perhaps we'll even do some interviews along the way if we find the right company representatives. These videos are long, but if you couldn't come to CES this year and you're interested in electric mobility, this is the video for you. So join me on the full tour of CES 2024. All right, well, we are starting off, of course, at Autel. My friend Dan over here. Hey, Dan. Uh, these guys, of course, sent us that 240 kilowatt charger. You keep asking about what's going on with the charger at the office. More updates coming soon. I've been traveling, but Autel has their i4. They've actually opened up a new interoperability lab in California, and this is one of the test vehicles that they'll have uh, testing chargers, their new products, uh, different interoperability standards and things like this. So that's pretty cool. Uh, and they also are showing off their new split distributed system. We, of course, have the Autel all-in-one 240 kilowatt system, but this can essentially be expanded anywhere from 40 to 640 kilowatts right here and then it feeds dispensers this is very similar to most of the off-highway charging solutions that we find and you can do i think dan was telling me you can do four dispensers up to eight ports and have sort of like a dc microgrid to share the power around cool solution and uh, i'm finally glad to see autel getting into the high power stuff which is absolutely awesome but come join me this way because there's so much more to discuss over here i think if you've seen tours in the past i kind of want to breeze through th some of this because a lot you have seen this is their maxi charger v to x this is essentially a low power dc back out to the vehicle and uh, it's not, uh, no vehicles really are working with this at the moment. It's still too early for V to X, but I think towards the end of 24 into 25, we'll start to see a trend of uh, standards being done for bi-directional charging and more vehicles supporting it. So this is a charger. Of course, we'll be testing when it's time, when there's vehicles that it can be working with, but it's a little bit ahead of the auto industry, if I'm honest. Also, this is a pretty sweet NAX connection right here. We can see NAX, of course, is the hot topic, uh, J3400 North American charging standard. I know how all of them work, but I'm not sure what the correct way to communicate this is. The nerds will say, Kyle, you have to say J3400. I don't know. Anyway, up to 80 amps on the North American charging standard here now with the Autel unit. They used to be 48. Now it's a quick disconnect new AC unit up to 80 amps. Really love to see that. This, of course, is the same unit that Colton has in his shop. It's the commercial version of the AC unit. Uh, the cables on this one have never been just perfect, but really the NAX connection cable. This is that's Tesla quality cable right there. That's really nice. This is actually, I think, my favorite level two charging post out there. First of all, I like the user interface. I like the app that I get with Autel, but also this is dual 80 amp output and it costs, honestly, I think half as much as the charge point unit, plus or minus, and they get the same, you know, you, charge point now can do 80 amp output on both, but I just, you know, the cost is really good. So 19.2 uh, kilowatt per port, dual 100 amp input. You can, of course, derate it to whatever maximum power you have available and it'll go. And here's my baby right here. This is my 240 kilowatt, not my exact one. Mine's up in the office in the garage. I got to wire it up. I just can't wait to charge on the damn thing. But, you know, we don't need to talk about this. I have full videos on this. Unboxing it. We'll have one installing it soon. And I think we're going to do some cool things. They also have the lower power DC units either on a skid. You can power this off of just a normal three phase connection and then wheel it over if you have an auto shop or a parking garage. And here's sort of a wall mounted dual output. I want to say 40 or 60 kilowatts, something like that. I think 40 kilowatts, 40. Yeah, 40 kilowatts, just one power module in that one. OK, enough on Autel. Again, these are going to be long, in-depth videos, so we love the guys over there. So we'll say goodbye, see you later, <laughs> and we're going to run over towards Keysight. Keysight Technologies, of course, spans beyond the EV industry. However, there's some really cool technology that they have um, to help with the uh, charge station testing, electric vehicle uh, uh, charger testing, and so they have a, a product called the CDS 
and the CDS is actually, if you zoom in over here, we'll show you it's sort of a man in the middle in this particular operation, what it was showing right there. And it can read the communications between the car and the charger, and it allows for loaded charging. So you can really go. They also have resistive load banks that you can plug into them and just do some interoperability testing before. So you don't have to like bring 500 cars when you're building a new electric vehicle. You can kind of just run all the protocols through your CDS. There's a bunch of other products, a bunch of other uh, information that uh, Keysight is known for and that offers in the EV space. However, to me, this is the most interesting. So Keysight, if you're watching this, send me a CDS. The problem is I think they're like 60 grand. I don't actually know, but they're really expensive. <laughs> Something really wild. Okay, this is the MIH booth and they have some interesting looking displays here. They have this new Pelkin concept electric vehicle delivery van looking thing and yeah some nice deep music what they have in here is actually pretty cool they have a um a delivery system that comes in here where essentially you can uh, it will auto sort so the amazon warehouse or whatever will load the vehicle so full of packages and then if you come over here on this side um we could actually say we met you the other day what was your name frank frank can i put a mic on you could you explain what this is okay cool sorry so here we go this is frank <laughs> Frank, this is YouTube. Yeah, this is a yeah. uh, system that is supposed to help delivery drivers save time. Mm -hmm. So they do not have to worry when they fill up the system and the, the rotating shelf we have. They do not have to worry about in what order they put it in, in how they how they sort it, what belongs where. They just basically fill it up all the way from beginning to the end. Uh, let's say 250 packages. And then when they go on their ride uh, with GPS, the system will know automatically which package goes to which uh, house and then when you uh, click on retrieving it, it'll open and it'll give you the package and the shelf you need. And if you have it, let's say you have three or two or four packages which are different shelves or different departments, it'll point it out or rotate the shelf for you to scan it out and deliver it. Very cool. Can we actually see what it looks like when we open it up here? So you guys come around over here to this side. Sorry, a bit of a squeeze. But you can see it will automatically basically pull out the packages needed for that particular address, which is super cool. Yeah, love to see that. You can see it Yeah. And here it comes along. <laughs> Lots of cool technology around here. Take anything here, one of our packages, and scan it in. Oh my God! You finally made it. And, then, and when when you're uh, you're done with the loading, everything has been loaded. Now you come to an address. We of course cannot simulate the GPS here, so you come to the unloading. You pick. Let's say we're location E. I'm just picking it. The system opens and points out, look over here, these two packages are for that location. We then scan them out from here as well. Oh, hold on. You scanned it? Yep. So we scan it out. And uh, this, uh, somebody must have put the wrong package in here. The way to send right now, but you scan out the system and then you're done and then you oh go to the next one. Amazing. And well, if you also, as I said, if you have the wrong package or it's the wrong, wrong system, it'll go and turn red. Ah, cool. Love to see it. Well, thank you, Frank. Appreciate the quick tour. And is this in production yet or it's available to be purchased by a, 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 someone wanting to implement this? Uh, no, we are trying to, we're going to design it for a customer that is, um, oh, wait a minute. That's what the problem was. It's going to going to a new position. We are going to design it for a customer that um, wants to basically uh, have it modified or designed to their standards. So you want a bigger shelf, you want more shelves, you want less shelves, you want an extension exit compartment for big. Uh, items in the back and we will design it for that. Amazing. Well, I'll steal the mic back from you, but thank you so much. Uh, one, oh, you got, we got more packages going. <laughs> okay, here you go. Yeah, thank, thank you. you thank you, Frank. Yeah. Appreciate it. Really good to see you. Thank Congratulations you. on this and good luck through everything going forwards. Okay, let's continue. We're at the MIH booth. It's Mobility in Harmony and there's a bunch of uh, just interesting things from different companies all around. So you can see they have their little MIH vehicle, which to me this is just absolutely epic. I mean, uh, and then just little EO genius. I, I, like, I don't know anything about this stuff. Well, you guys know me. I'm not really of a level two 
AC charging reviewer, if you will. I'm more of a, a DC guy, but of course we all need AC charging most of the time. But look at this cute little thing. This is the MIH Project X. It's not in series production, but you know, you can do 80 miles an hour in this thing and go, I don't know, just under 60, uh, under 100 miles or so. So that seems pretty good. But it's all just a design concept, if you will. There's also Pebble over here, which of course, um, these battery integrated trailers with electric motors to help reduce the range loss of towing with an electric pickup truck make a lot of sense, but none of them have quite made it to production. Both this and Lightship are the two companies that most people will think of in this category. However, none of them have made it to production yet. So I don't know if I want to spend too much time on this stuff, although CES is still very future focused, looking forward ahead technology. I can't wait to play around with this. We know the guys at Pebble, we said, hey, once you kind of get everything dialed in, let's, uh, let's do a video together, let's do all this. But I kind of want to make sure they make it before we do that. Right now, there's tons of interest. I, I, they took me on a full tour earlier and I was really impressed with the design idea and shared some of my feedback. And um, yeah, we'll see how much of it comes, uh, comes to fruition. Yeah. Hey, hey, great to see you. How's everything, Cam? Yeah, yeah. By the way, those of you who like those sick Optima Rivian builds, that's Cam right here. That's his stuff. Did you, you have, uh, Sam was just redoing your truck? Yes. Is it even cooler? I put a tent on there that's so huge. I don't know if I can live with it, but it's awesome. <laughs> so you have like a king size mattress up there. Have you ever heard of the Bush Company? No, the Bush Company? They're awesome. Okay, so we got to do an update video on your Rivian sometime. Okay, uh, yeah, you got the Tundras over there then. Good stuff. Good to see you, Cam. Okay, and here we have TELUS Power. We are all familiar with TELUS Power. They produce uh, DC electric vehicle supply equipment as well as AC. They sell to products like Blink. They're just a you know another charging manufacturer, if you will. Um, some of the issues look like they're fixed in years past. I've always had an issue with their um, with their cable management system, but look, they fixed it. They're coming all the way up now. So really happy to see that. They've got this double stacker. Uh, AC, EVSC looks pretty interesting. We've seen most of this stuff at other shows before, but cool to be back here and check out some of their, uh, what they got going on. This looks like a huge sort of advertising level two situation with, I'm not sure what kind of payment terminal this would be, but you know, some, similar to like a Volta situation, we're starting to see different charge point operators try to integrate different um, uh, business models for providing charging. So this certainly could be one for sure. I also don't want to spend too much time on this, but this is iSpecs or A-Specs, um, but they have not put this product into mass production yet, but I hope they do. It's roughly just under 200 kilowatt hours on wheels and it can charge up an electric vehicle or do something with mobile power. So I like the idea. I'll cover it when they make it. So let's continue. Um, yeah, tell us interesting stuff. Cool booth, really way the heck right up front for everyone to see. This show, absolutely insane when it comes to electric mobility. Every year, CES is turning into more of a car show. And right now we are in the West Hall of CES. There's also a central and a north and two outdoor areas. Uh, and at the end of this video, we're gonna view other areas around um, CES. We're gonna visit Honda, for example, Kia's outside. There's other charging companies in different places, tons of suppliers for the entire automotive industry here. Of course, uh, Magna is here, other companies that you would have known as well. HBE is another uh, one of these pop-up charging companies. And I have to tell you, there's this trend where one year we see a bunch of charging companies come, the next year they don't come anymore. And then every new year there's a fresh crop of boxes with cables attached to them that show up and then we never see them again. And, you know, HBE, I think, is part of a parent company that's quite large and has quite a bit of money, but I'm not sure people want to charge on boxes with just cables coming out of them. Really, I want to see the next generation of charger focusing on user experience, reliability, not 200 amp cables on 200 kilowatt chargers. And I'm not saying HBE is that, but I came by here earlier just to get some information and Alyssa, they, they knew nothing. They were like, we make chargers. I'm like, great, tell me about them. Oh, we can't. <laughs> it was a bit of a bit of a language barrier and also just like not much deep knowledge. And maybe we got the wrong person, but it left me with an impression of the company, which is even more confused as to why they're here. Uh, there's also a home energy uh, sort of storage situation in that that's a battery pack, but I'm not sure if it's LFP, NMC, if it works with the US grid, no clue. Continuing. So 
West Hall, so many little things. Also, of course, I mentioned the supplier base, not only for vehicles, but also for charging companies. So you can see there's a bunch of different charging standards that are coming into America nowadays. And so here we have some on display for you. You can see we have the the J1772 connector that, that you guys are all familiar with. You can see this one's actually kind of got a nice little latch here. This, of course, is CCS1. This is what our country has been using well, really since the beginning of DC charging, but we are all switching from this to NAX. And NAX, of course, is the North American charging standard J3400. Uh, you can do high current, high power. And then, of course, MCS. This is everything from basically one to three and a half megawatts or so. Uh, so this is really cool. And of course, this company, Samu, is a uh, cable manufacturer. Did I say it correctly? How do we? Yeah, Samu. Awesome. Hey, guys. How's it going? Sorry to bombard you. <laughs> Charles, do you want to give us a quick rundown on what you guys do? Oh, yeah, sure. Here you uh, go. Just hold this close up to your mouth there. Uh, we manufacture um, EV charger couplers and cables. Yeah. And right now we're working very hard on making sure the NAC standard is safe as well as the 500 amp uh, liquid cold NAC cable. Yeah, you'll be one of the few to offer a 500 amp NAC option right at the beginning. So nice work on a lot of that. I'll Thank steal the so mic much. back Absolutely. from you. Thank you. Great to see you guys. Sorry, again, just to bombard you, but uh, you. cool. Good to see you. You'll be on YouTube tomorrow. <laughs> and then we have another charging company over here and also actually similar product line offering to Autel. Hey, sorry, then. <laughs> right now, good yeah. to see you. And, uh, you know, Autel, of course, produced uh, originally OBD products, scan tools, car products. Top Done also produces uh, scan tool equipment, uh, 12 volt boosters or, or maintainers, but then also have recently launched their EV line of products, which I'm excited to share with you at least. This is a unit that was originally launched 48 amp NEMA 1450 connection EVSE. Tom's reviews of this were less than stellar, let's just say, if that's being generous, but they've learned and they've launched some new products. This is their Euro Type 2 uh, sort of home unit, I believe. This one's a 40 amp. I think if I remember correctly what they were telling me, they also have a 48 amp commercial uh, unit right here. And then in the near future, they will have an American UL certified uh, DC fast charging product. And I don't actually know if it says how much power this can do. I wanna say 180 to 240 kilowatts. Not sure. Of course, when I can charge on one in the real world, I'll give you a full review of this thing and we'll try it out. They also have a mobile EVSE which actually has a NEMA 520 connection. You can do 515 or 520. So you can do 16 amps. That's actually pretty rare to find those up to uh, 32 amps with a NEMA 1450 connection. So pretty big product portfolio, some adapters as well. They have some things going on. How's it going? Did I get all of that right? Was that, did that sound reasonable? Oh, okay. How many kilowatts does that one go up to? go from 60 to 240. 60 to 240. Okay, very good. Good to see you guys. Okay, can, yeah. Continuing on, there's some more things to take a look at. I'm trying to blast through CES for y'all. And we have some more things over here. Hey, dude, you want to be back on YouTube? You? Can you give us a rundown? I'm going to hand you a mic. Okay. <laughs> Sorry to just throw this no, on you. That's fine. Let's do it. Tell me where you're at with MCS. All right. So MCS, we're moving right along. We're uh, actually working on the inlets now. So oh. I think last time you saw us, we had a 3D printed inlet. Yeah. Um, now we're using production level tooling for the molding. Okay. Uh, and so this is moving right along. We've got some partners now that are getting ready to test this in hand. Do you have to thermally things. manage your inlets? So they are going to all have temp sensors in them. Okay. Um, because of the multi-lamp technology that we have in here, we shouldn't have to worry too much about that. That helps with the, the kind of... Yeah, I think if you have to start getting inlet ports that are liquid cooled, it gets pretty complicated. It is. And there's going to be a few stages, as, as you're probably familiar, is the level or configuration one, two, and three. Um, it's not requiring that the inlet be cooled until configuration three. Mm -hmm. um, and I think that's probably going to be down the line a little bit. But okay. yeah, that's, that is something that you know we're working on right now and ready to get some feedback from partners. Yeah, so and, and I can't wait to charge on it. So I really like this connection. Obviously, it's the same rough MCS that you guys have seen before. But again, uh, up to 3,000 amps for MCS, right? Yeah. Holy yeah, smokes. We're going to be pushing. So Juicy power. <laughs> the charging group's pushing it right now. Yeah. And, you know, we're working through everything and the standards are getting finalized so it's okay exciting. and are you looking for customers to purchase this stuff in the near we are. future so we've or? got a few customers that we're partnering with to get their feedback and okay. start testing it now and then you know want to continue that momentum and, and how do they get in contact with you just linkedin you or uh, check us out at stably.com um yeah or find me on linkedin hell yeah, yeah. either way okay great to see hey, you dude i'm still in the mic back sorry yeah, to bombard you like it. that no but worries. we're doing the ces full tour yeah that's right yeah we're doing everything we'll see you later 
Okay, so lots of fun. Really cool that because we're able to come to these shows and meet the people, we're really uh, starting to get to know the, the real key players in the industry, I'd say, from each company, the folks that I like to put on camera that I feel are best represent what they are offering. And um, to me, that's, that's all part of the fun. It's all part of being you know, in the e-mobility world is trying to understand, okay, who's legit, who's not, what, what do we think, you know, me and my friends and my colleagues think is like, okay, what are the important brands to cover and then cover them. And of course, I want to give you a broad picture of, of everything. And I can't always say my opinion you guys will agree with, but I can at least just give you my opinion. For example, there's a like Zooks vehicle over here, which we've seen stuff like that forever, but fully autonomous uh, cars, that topic in general has seemingly decreased at CES this year. I think people are getting more realistic and understanding like autonomy is hard. Level five is hard, whatever it is. And we're also seeing a trend of people not communicating around the SAE levels of autonomy. We're starting to really see sort of just let's see what we can do to keep cars safe today. Level two, level two plus, level three, whatever they are claiming. And, you know, there's starting to be a distinction of hands on or hands off or eyes on or eyes off nomenclature more than the actual SAE terminology. So sorry to get in your way there, but it just seems like an interesting trend is happening in automotive. So anyway, I want to go straight ahead because VinFast is here and they have some cool concepts to share. Um, look, I know I've made a rough review at VinFast last year. That still stands. That car is not a good car, the VF8. And I can't promise that their new products will be any better. However, what I can do at least is show you what they have on display. And there's one car in particular that I'm really excited. This is the VinFast pickup truck. They call it wild, or at least that's what the sign says right here. Um, let's just take a quick look and see if we can find anything about it. So yeah, nice concept looking truck. Let's not spend too much time focusing on concepts this show. Um, yeah, so I guess it's called the VinFast Wild, but this is the one I'm most excited about, the VF3. Such a cool package, really cool color. Again, I really hope they bring this to America. It's just got this sense of personality, sense of fun. And, you know, even if the specs are less than stellar, even if the quality is less than stellar, uh, how could you not just love this thing? I mean, I'd love to get Alyssa's opinion. She's behind the camera, but Aly Alyssa, why don't you share with the viewers? What do you think? Oh, I think it's super cute. It'd be great little uh, dog hauler for the, the dogs. The, you know, the smart car is getting a little bit too small for all three. So we might need a little upgrade and this looks like a perfect cute car for it. Yeah, absolutely. Thanks, Alyssa. And there's also a VF9 just over here, which the VF9, I have to say the VinFast stuff looks great on the outside. The VF9 has got this good shape, really cool interior to, from my side. I hope the chassis dynamics are good. The NVH is good. The software, really the big one. They got to dial that in, the charging performance. Um, but yeah, I mean, this is one hell of a, look at this scoop up here. What the heck? Is this McLaren or an SUV? <laughs> wow, the wipers just went. Did I did I trigger the wipers? Did you see that on camera? Yeah. I don't know. Okay, don't know? <laughs> they were like, Kyle, get out of here. <laughs> what are you doing at the VinFast booth? <laughs> it's so funny to watch all the VinFast employees when we show up, they're all like, Argh. <laughs> anyway, a um, bunch of other stuff over here. Of course, we've seen the, the Bobcat Doosan booth in the past. They produce, is it Doosan, Doosan, Doosan? Not really sure, but also there's a Polestar 3 just over this way. Um, and we all know I'm a big fan of Polestar 3. It was exactly one year ago at the last CES show that we were able to bring this vehicle to you for the first time. Here it is at the Luminar booth where they have the LiDAR showcased on top. So that's always pretty interesting. They've also done a recent partnership with Mercedes. So here they have an AMG GTR, uh, which looks awesome. One of the Formula One safety cars with a Luminar radar on top. Now I'm sure this is more for display purposes than actual autonomous driving, but I could be wrong. You never know. Uh, yeah, we're not gonna focus on that too much, but a big topic of CES this year is robotics. Another one is AI, autonomy, et cetera, et cetera. But, Take a look at this. We're starting to see these either remote controlled or wirelessly controlled, or also in some cases, autonomous um, construction and mining equipment. And so here you have a, a pretty much battery electric digger. What was this? What would this be called? Excavator. Excavator. You're going to, you're going to learn. Our viewers will learn very quickly. I know less than nothing about construction. I'm fascinated with construction materials and construction equipment. I love it, but I really don't know anything. So get in the comments, get your angry fingers going, say, Kyle, you idiot. Shouldn't you know what this stuff is? 
Here's a front loader, I guess, would be how I would describe it. Uh, Bobcat, this is the uh, S7X all electric. Also non-pneumatic tires, really cool to see this type of technology here. I would love to do some videos on this stuff. They also have uh, autonomous lawn mowers. Damn, look at that, the ZT6200 autonomous. I like it. This one, not really sure what the heck you're supposed to do with this one. Lawn mower, really fancy lawn mower. Maybe for like baseball fields, I don't know. Okay, cool. Anyway, they have an AI cocktail bar. Cool, this is Tog. Yep. Tog is a Turkish car company. Correct. And the only thing I know about them is they have a great sound system in their vehicles because we met a guy who's responsible for the sound system at this booth uh, who lives in, Sh in, not in Cheyenne, he lives in Casper, Wyoming. We took the elevator with him uh, two days ago and he said that the sound system in the Tog is great and he's the audio engineer. So that's the only thing I can say. They've already sold their all electric SUV. They have a electric um, sedan looking thing right here on display. Again, I don't think they're gonna be selling in our market, but uh, they went all out. They go all out every year. So much money being spent. And I think part, partially the company is almost representing as a like public, I don't know, uh, attraction for Turkey. Like I like to go to Germany because of the German automakers. I think they want Turkey to be viewed as a, um, you know, nice country because they make a nice car. Does that make sense? Yes. Yes, okay. Yeah, it's kind of like how my understanding of the, uh, not Vietnamese restaurants, but it was, no, where, when we get uh, Pad Siu, Thai restaurants, <laughs> my brain's going a bunch, that uh, the government, the, the, the Taiwanese government funded the startup of a bunch of Taiwanese restaurants in America so that people would have a better understanding of their country or a better feeling about their country for tourism. I'm going off on a tangent. This is an all electric mining machine and it is sick. And I've done a full tour of this entire booth for you and it will come, it will be coming live in just a couple days after this. Sorry to get in front of your camera there. And um, I have to remember the name of this one. This is the R, yeah, hell yeah, the R1700XE, just over 200 kilowatt hour battery pack. It can charge off of this 500 kilowatt charger and they've made their own proprietary connection this is an air-cooled, again, non-liquid cooled, 700 amp continuous charger. And what's crazy about this mining equipment is it has two DC ports, so you can hook up two of those 500 kilowatt chargers to it, and it can charge from 10 to 100% in 18 minutes. I want a charging curve like that. I guess I got a daily one of these bad boys. So <laughs> range test coming sooner than you think. They actually said we could go to their uh, little testing grounds and drive it around, so pretty cool. I don't want to spend too much time here because uh, John Thomas, an awesome viewer of Out of Spec, works for Cat, and he and I did a full tour video going through every single bit of this and really keep an eye out for that because it's absolutely amazing what they have going on from battery storage to small excavator stuff, full battery electric. It's just awesome. This is the one that really blew up on Twitter, and I'm not sure if it's the new design for Ionic 5, like styling-wise. That would be kind of a weird way to display it, but this is a vehicle that can drive sideways or diagonally or do loops. I'm not sure who the test driver is, but I imagine he's getting very ill <laughs> doing, you know, it basically each, uh, each wheel has its own individual steering mechanism. So it can crab walk, it can go full spins, drive completely sideways. It's pretty freaking sweet, pretty freaking sweet. Uh, Horwin reimagined the future and all electric adventure awaits. So they say 2.8 second, zero to 60, 125 mile an hour top speed, 186 miles of range. Is that enough? It looks pretty cool. Looks like it's charging on J1772 perhaps. Don't know much about this stuff. If you guys want more electric motorcycle content, start tweeting at Jordan and he can make it for you. Alyssa. I'm going to let you present this one. <laughs> Here's the mic. Oh, I got to unclip you. Here you go. All right. So uh, over here is my new car, obviously. Uh, just going to take it home as soon as we uh, leave here. You'll, you, you can drive the Tesla. I'll drive this. 
Uh, no, but it's it's been on display for a long, long time. What is it? Uh, it's a electric G. Yeah, this is why I don't present. This is why I'm behind the camera. Uh, yeah, looks good. Looks great. Would love it. And uh, it's the ultimate dog collar. Four motors. Does a G turn? Four motors. Does a G turn? I don't know all this stuff. It looks great. And hopefully uh, it'll function. I want to show you the viewers the new Mercedes-Benz AC wall box. Guess how many Mercedes logos are on this bad boy? 500. Yeah, I think it's actually 170. I don't know. Somebody counted? I think when I did a Twitter post of a prototype. I don't know if they were being serious or not, though. I'm not going to take the time to count. No. <laughs> uh, Mercedes also has their typical models on display. The EQS, the Concept CLA, which debuts their next generation architecture up to 800 volts or so. Actually, I can swap you back the camera. So thank you, Alyssa. And um, yeah, their next generation architecture and the Concept CLA. I think it's um, obviously very much a concept car. However, what they're debuting is more efficient powertrain technology, much better charging. We're gonna start to see the Germans go up to 800 volts here very soon. So I'm looking forward to that. We've been discussing Goodyear a lot. You guys know I'm a tire nerd. Uh, I absolutely love tires on vehicles and how they're engineered. And we've spent time at tire test tracks in the past with Goodyear in the San Angelo testing facility. And they have some new technology on display. We've also been discussing them recently because they did the um, uh, they did the Cybertruck tire. But I also just want to take a look at this. It's with um, Goodyear Sightline sight to the conditions of the tire. Oh, wow. Real-time monitoring. So it can tell you, I guess, if your tire tread is low, which Tesla can do, but it uses in-motor control. This is in-tire stuff. So it's got some sensors in the tires. Pretty cool. Love to see it. But here's the Cybertruck tire just right over here. Take a look at this. So this one right here, the Goodyear Territory RT, but it's an OE Tesla tire. It's the Cybertruck tire. Uh, Non-triple peak rated, by the way. So, uh, of course, Tesla had to go with a pretty thin tread block because they wanted the range. They wanted the steering response out of the tire. Uh, and, but, but I think at a compromise, they gave up a, probably a little bit of longevity, perhaps. And we'll have to test that in the real world. But then also uh, winter performance. Go for, like I said, a hardcore snows if it gets really cold. This will be fine in mild conditions, I would say. Um, but part of that compromise is a non-triple peak rating. On the other side, there's uh, some sort of sound uh, insulation that has gone in here, as well as probably a much more, I would say it's probably the best handling all-terrain I've ever driven because it's designed for something as agile as the Tesla Cybertruck. I think it's cool how they have it on display. They say an all-electric semi-autonomous pickup truck, except it doesn't even ship with autopilot in the one that we tested. So that will come with some software updates in the near future. Cool design in collaboration with Tesla. Really love this edgy stuff. Again, the wheel cap kind of sits on top of this. So an amazing tire. I really want to learn more about it, but overall pretty sick. Did I get all that right? Okay, thumbs up from the Goodyear guy. <laughs> Good stuff. Thanks, dude. <laughs> All right, continuing along. Uh, what else do they have? Aviation tires? Oh, I've never seen one of these. Holy smokes. So commercial truck tire, of course, we have right here. But this is a freaking airplane tire from the 737 MAX. Wow. It's so soft. So this thing in rain, it's just got the grooves for the water. I've never seen an airplane tire up close. I wonder if they need this thing after the show. <laughs> Keep moving. Okay. Continuing along. Um, of course, tires for electric cars become so important because every input is response. You need range. Do you want performance because electric motors are fast? And so you're just stretching the capabilities of what you can do with rubber and it gets absolutely insane. Here we are at the Mobileye booth. You have the Volkswagen ID Buzz with the Mobileye suite of sensors for autonomous driving. They're testing these in Austin, Texas, believe it or not. This particular one is a Euro spec ID Buzz, of course, short wheelbase, and it is a base trim. Reflector headlights, no IQ light on this one either, but pretty cool. I've had a chance to see these over time, so that is cool. Mobileye doing a lot, of course, with sensor technology, with autonomous driving, and most importantly, driver assistance systems and vehicles today. I think they have more cameras installed than any other supplier in vehicles, Mobileye. Could be wrong about that, but I think that's true. Come on over this way. They also have a Polestar 4 on display, so really excited to see this one because I have not seen the Polestar 4 until the show. This is the one that doesn't have the rear window and it uses 
camera only, but what a gorgeous car. 100 kilowatt hour battery pack, 400 kilowatt power output, really nice interior as well. If you take a look, Jordan has a full video on the Polestar 4 on this channel when he attended Polestar Day, which was a gathering of enthusiasts, journalists, owners, and uh, wow, interesting. They even have a light up badge around here. That's very cool. So again, my first time really seeing the Polestar 4 in person. Personally, I don't like the whole rear window camera only thing, but I think it could work. I've driven plenty of vehicles that have the digital rear view mirror. Jordan said the rear view in this is better than almost anything. And I think maybe that's gonna take up a little bit too much of the media coverage compared to potentially how good it is to drive. So I'm not sure what chassis it's built on, some Geely Group chassis, I'm sure. And it is weird how the Polestar 2 is smaller than the Polestar 3, but then this is smaller than the Polestar 3. So I'm not sure what their names mean. It's supposed to be in order of, of release, but I don't think it actually worked out that way. So pretty cool. Mobile Eye, of course, technology in this particular one. We should talk to them more in the near future about what they're doing, but I like the Polestar 4. We gotta run, we gotta keep going. Is there anything down this way that we missed? Qualcomm, what was that? Y Tricity. Oh, we gotta go quick. Okay, let's go, let's go, let's go. So running, oh, there's also Hyundai. Qualcomm. So Snapdragon, of course, has a digital chassis tool to help with engineering of electric vehicles. They did the theater display in the i7, I believe. Also some of the other uh, subsystems of the vehicle. So that's what this is all about. But it's all like private meeting rooms. You have to be invited in. So we are not invited in, Alyssa. <laughs> I don't know what they... I, I actually don't fully understand Snapdragon. So if one of you guys knows, let me know in the comments, but I know, I'm pretty sure they did the tuning for the i7 display. We're not gonna go into the Hyundai booth. The only reason is the exit is, this is the exit and the entrance has a long ass line, technical term. But if we just peek in here, huge displays, absolutely crazy. Talking about autonomous tech, future technology, sensors, autonomous mobility, I don't know, I'll insert buzzword here, they're talking about it in there. This is pretty cool, this is like a, um, uh, from the ARI, the Applied Research Institute, they have a autonomous high-speed off-road tank. Sign me up, is all I hear on that. Clemson University did this particular one. I don't think it's battery electric, but it is sick. Uh, is it electric? Is this one electric by chance? Partly. Partly, so it's a hybrid? Yeah. Oh, very cool, amazing. And uh, cool, just wanted to check it out. Looks pretty sick, nice <laughs> that's, tank. That's the only question you had. That was it. Powertrain. <laughs> yes, <laughs> powertrain question. Thank you very much. And then of course they have sort of an electric racing series that they're doing uh, with these vehicles, autonomous racing series. So pretty cool, they did this at Las Vegas Motor Speedway. I think the other night they invited us to it, but uh, we didn't actually have the chance to go and check it out. I heard there was actually a crash last year. So it got, got pretty spicy. Okay, continuing. I see why Tricity in the distance. Again, I want to cover the, holy smokes, Alyssa, we got to run across. Whoa, that, that was more people than I think I've ever seen in my life. That was crazy. Of course, we have some driven simulation stuff over here. Simulation is so important to the future of vehicles and it's important to the current future. I mean, no, every car company has been simulating some portion of their engineering uh, for since the 80s or even before. And to simulate means you can reduce the number of prototype count, you can reduce the number of in-person tests, you can speed up production and you can increase quality. So love to see that. This over here, AVGO has a Delta high power unit on display along with a Nissan Aria um, charging. Uh, Green Hills Software, isn't that Dan O'Dow's company? I don't know. Anyway, I think they're doing some sort of new plug and charge um, uh, digital certificate handler other than Hubject. It's sort of a competitor to them. Anyway, continuing to Y-Tricity. Kind of a weird booth for EVGO to be at. I don't know, not here, not here to judge. And here is a KGM Taurus EVX. I've never seen this car before, never heard of this car. I it is fully electric, it's a Chinese car, and it's cool, really cool car. Come take a look in here. I mean, it's like small, it's nifty, reminds me of like a little mini countryman sized vehicle. And uh, anyway, it's hooked up here to a Y-Tricity unit. And the way the Y-Tricity works is there's actually an AC to DC rectifier in here, 
which converts, of course, the, a, uh, the AC power from the wall to direct current. It then goes into this wireless charging pad. You bring the vehicle over top. There's a receiver plate on the vehicle. You can retrofit Mustang Mach-E and Ford E-Transit in our market. And then it will low power DC charge at roughly 20 or 25 amps maximum, I think, into the battery pack. So it's roughly um, yeah, 10, 10, 11 kilowatts, something like that. And I think the efficiency is north of 90%, which is way better than I thought wireless charging was. So maybe we should do something with this. They offered to send one to our office. We could install it, maybe get an e-transit or I think uh, Powerhouse actually just took delivery of F-150 Lightning. So it could be kind of cool. I'd like to play around with it, but that's why Tricity. We ran all the way over here. So I told you about that. I didn't realize they DC charged the car. That was the main excitement factor. Um, now we're back at Keysight, but since we're over here, I may as well show you the Neo ES7. We have a full review of this car on this channel, driving it for the first time, experiencing it for the first time, trying the driver assistance in Norway. We've also done a battery swap on this thing. And yeah, I'm running around the back, so I make sure I didn't get the model name wrong. ET7. ES7 would have been an SUV because they have the ES8 ET7. I knew I was off on something there. Getting out of breath. It's the end of the day. We've been talking to people, but we're only a quarter of the way through. We got to run. Let's go. Got to run, run, run. Okay, we're kind of back in TELUS. There's Apex AI, which is a cool um, company actually focused on full autonomy. I had a meeting with them like four or five years ago. So it's cool that they've stuck around this long. The only problem I had with Apex AI, which is I'm not a great reviewer of autonomous technology because truly I, everyone is just claiming BS. Not saying that Apex AI is, I, I don't know. Um, but they used Lexus RX test vehicles and that's like the least interesting autonomous test vehicle you could use. So to me, do something exciting. If you can spend the money on a Lexus RX, you could at least do an electric car or an exciting combustion car. Anyway, this company, Help on the Road, pretty cool. They actually licensed Lessa, uh, Tesla, the technology to do the fast blink. Why they had to license a blink pattern, I don't know exactly, but using lights to communicate different things uh, that happen on the roadway is really important. Um, yeah, so essentially what happens is when an airbag goes off with an over-the-air update, Tesla used Help on the Road's technology, this is my understanding, and their blink pattern licensed it. And now when an airbag goes off, you get this blink pattern on a Tesla, really fast blinks. I think that's really smart. Alerts that there's an actual emergency. I believe Stellantis is looking into this and Volkswagen are starting to partner with them. Why they can't just say blink faster, I don't know. They have to license it. Forgive me if I'm getting any of this wrong, but I think that's my understanding. Uh, I mean, that is my understanding. I think that's correct. Then, okay, hmm, interesting. VinFast also makes bikes, by the way large bicycle manufacturer huge pretty incredible actually we have a escalade with the sport pack everything blacked out i don't know i'm not into the q8 Alyssa. what do you think no no okay genesis gv70 looks great up here on the left but it is not electrified it is the uh, combustion one. They also have a BMW iX in this back corner, but it is the M60 spicy version. Uh, oh, sorry, this is combustion, not electric. Uh, but the M60, the iX M60, that's a great car. Really nice car. Maybe not great thermals on the drivetrain, but a nice car. Okay. Innoviz, another LiDAR company that produces LiDAR for BMW and Volkswagen. They have an i7 right here. Great spec on the i7. Another one of the ID Buzz vehicles. Again, it looks like Innoviz and um, Mobileye probably collaboration, different sensors, and then another integrator would be my guess are doing all of that stuff. There is a charging company over here, Chevy, that I want to showcase to you. I don't think I've seen a Chevy charger installed in the U.S. yet, but they have a full product line of all-in-one 400 kilowatt units right here. They have 180 kilowatt all in one. And they also are showcasing some of their dashboard stuff here, which is pretty cool. So you can see all of this through here, basically shows you the charger metrics. And um, yeah, pretty cool to see this. The only thing I would recommend they change is kilowatt to kilowatt hour, uh, just because that particular metric is off there. But other than that, really cool uh, dashboard, nice looking chargers. Again, I haven't used it, showcasing that NACS J3400 connection with the SAMU cable. We were just over there 
talking to those guys and yeah so pretty cool stuff again haven't charged on one want to see one installed and uh, i believe they have a bunch in south korea installed but uh yeah okay continuing on <laughs> so let's go what else do we have around hmm. well we ran into can oh Alyssa, do you see what i see it is a hi-fi x i think x is the one hi-fi yeah yeah here we go this is crazy and uh actually they have them on display at the munich airport if you ever want to go by it's like they claim an suv they claim a sedan i don't know what they claim is what i'm trying to tell you but it's just this crazy car that is like literally represents chinese excess it's just absolutely insane big power big acceleration uh matt watson has a car wow review of this that just makes it look insane and yeah like what wow. Just craziness. That's the only way I can describe this thing. It's so cool that this is here in America. A hi-fi. Insane. These are the Tundras Cam was talking about. So, uh, of course, we've seen the Optima Rivian R1S and R1T. Those are Cam trucks. He's also built out two Tundras, it looks like. And they also host an event every year at King of the Hammers called Unplugged. And actually, here's an advertisement for it. And essentially, it's like an off-road electric truck gathering and it happens every few months and it, i believe it's in collaboration with direct current engineering our friend sam from overland Rux, rough racks who did the the rats on our rivian also attends and it's just a really cool i don't know really cool off-road gathering i would say okay fev is here i just want to show you guys this they have a laboratory occasionally we'll be browsing uh, epa documents and it'll show laboratory fev that would be these guys and so they have an epa test laboratory there's a Rivian R1T just here, but it has nothing to do with the Rivian or a vehicle, but it's just on display. Uh, so cool. I actually want to meet these FEV guys and go to their lab and talk about EPA testing and how it's all done. I've seen photos from inside their lab because they're submitted on the range test results uh, that the automakers submit. Whew, I am out of breath, but we got more to do, more to do. Okay, we have LiDAR companies, so many sensor companies. I don't know how you can tell the difference between this LiDAR, that LiDAR, this radar, this one. To me, it's just like, do you buy the cheapest one if you're an automaker? Do you buy the medium one? Do you test this stuff? There's hundreds of companies. Of course, ABB eMobility has their display here. We've also shot a full tour of their display and uh, you know have gone in depth on this stuff. So we'll have a whole video. I don't even need to stop in and showcase some of the things going on here. But um, yeah, basically full video coming on ABB eMobility in the coming days. This is the craziest freaking car on display at the entire show. This is a McMurtry. And this is what set the Goodwood record up the hill. It literally has a fan that sucks it to the road. It's so much smaller in person than I expected. It's, are you from McMurtry? Can you talk about it on camera? Nope. Oh, damn. <laughs> um, but it's just, you know, sort of a dream car. Absolutely insane. I think they're on sale for roughly a million bucks, plus or minus. And um, I mean, it is what everything good in automotive in one package It's what we basically work for so we can experience and look at and enjoy cars like this particular one. Uh, by the way, this whole company is funded by the Taiwanese Concrete Company, and I believe they're involved with the battery pack on the McMurtry, or is it Cement Company? Yeah, Cement Company. And they do um, mobile battery enclosures with batteries. This is a Zorova charger. They also produce the chargers uh, all funded together through this Taiwanese thing. My understanding is like this company was super dirty and like needed some green credits or green goodness, I guess. And then all these cool little, you know, innovations came out of it. But nice work, guys, from McMurtry. This thing is crazy cool. I'm, <laughs> yeah, I'm Kyle. Very nice to meet you. Hey there. Nice to meet you guys. We got to continue with the video. <laughs> yeah. All right, moving along, you can see they also have part of this uh, cement company, these cement enclosures for battery storage. And they also provide the battery packs from, I believe, a few different suppliers, but they'll do NMC or um, uh, LFP technology. And essentially the idea is they have built-in fire suppression as well as this concrete buffer so that if there is a thermal event and this is installed in a public area, it's sort of self-contained. That's the spiel I got. Bridgestone Tires is here, 
anything cool. You guys know I'm a tire nerd, I mentioned, but I actually don't think they have any tires on display. What's up with that? Bridgestone, bring some rubber. Actually, we're on camera right there. Hey, that's awesome. Blackview dash cams picking us up. Woo, what else, what else, what else? Kia, holy smokes, Alyssa, you ready for the Kia booth? Yeah, Kia booth, insane this year. Um, Kia Global is unveiling an entirely new platform for electric delivery stuff. That seems to be a topic. Fleets are spending money on electrification because for them it's just a dollar amount. There's no emo emotional purchase that goes into a fleet purchase decision. It's all about dollars and cents. So if you can save people money and you can provide a configurable delivery vehicle, then why not do it? And Kia is going all in. This is cool. You can see here they basically have one platform. You can load a pickup bed on it, a van bed on it, and a really amazing display. I have to say this is probably my favorite display at CES this year. You'll see some of the PV7 concepts just over here to the right. They have big ones, small ones, all in different sizing categories. This is sort of an almost stand-up van. This dude's waving. <laughs> <laughs> it's just such a cool van. It really is. Come take a look over here. They also have a small one just over this way. And this thing opens up. Look at how far the wheels go. It uses pretty much that same technology that we saw from the uh, Ionic 5 Mobis car, where the wheels can all turn and do crazy things, where these go almost 90 degrees. Just whoop. So cool. Let's continue. This way, please. Okay, Genesis GV60 straight ahead. I'm just taking a look at the Sonatus. Sonatus? How would you say it? Sonatus booth. Uh, they have a, va a vehicle platform, apparently, uh, in collaboration with Foxtron, I'm reading. So, again, I don't know anything about this, but maybe we should, but I don't. Best thing on display at the whole show, truly, is this right here. We're at the Blackberry booth. This is a F-150 Lightning. And on the F-150 Lightning, they wrapped it for the show, but they did not leave the charge port door to open. <laughs> so what are you supposed to do? They were just wrapping and they're like, just gonna wrap over the charge port door. No one needs to charge this thing. Guess not. Guess not. <laughs> okay, let's go. That's the only thing I can tell you about BlackBerry because it's the only thing I learned about it. I'm not sure I want to learn more about a company that doesn't cut out the charge port door. Attention to detail. It matters. Truly matters. Um, okay. Should we head to Magna? We've done so many videos with Magna this trip. They're all on their YouTube channel, so you can take a look at all of that. They're showcasing seating, enclosures, powertrain. Oh, maybe I think our audience would like to see their new electric motor. So. The electric motor for the Fisker Ocean, I didn't say that because it's not totally confirmed, but it's the electric motor for the ocean, is right here on display. And they basically have a front primary drive and a rear secondary drive with a full permanent magnet uh, situation. It's a disconnect on the rear axle. Of course, Magna powertrain uh, in that particular one. This is the current technology. It's good. It's not great, I would say, but it's acceptable and it's fine for that car. And it, it works pretty well. The next generation is crazy. If you come and join me over here, I can demonstrate to you the new electric motor. This is tiny, 258 kilowatt power output out of this one. You can actually drive it a little bit harder than that. Permanent magnet, but with the use of almost no rare earth materials. The power density is pretty much only second to Lucid, which means it's actually more power dense than a Tesla motor, and it's designed to be highly reproducible, which is pretty incredible. Has an integrated diff lock as an option if you want it. It's designed for um, sort of European performance SUVs. Has a chiller, has a, um, uh, actually really cool, an, an electric oil pump that only runs when you need the cooling. So if you're going at high speed, but with low torque, there's no heat. Why well, cycle all the oil and you get some losses? But then if you're going low speed with high load, off-roading, launches, track stuff, has an electric oil pump and zzz, can crank it right up and give you the cooling. And it can do direct rotor cooling and also direct cooling pretty much right up to the magnets, which means they're able to reduce the amount of rare earth materials in this one to only half a percent of the magnet uh, or less is my understanding and it's all because they can cool right up there from a sustainability aspect they magna is now doing all their own rotor laminations which is cool you can tell i've read the press briefing on this one 
and they are um, actually, rather than baking in the permanent magnets to the rotor, they're tabbed in. So at end of life, when you have to dismantle this and recycle it, they can just pop out the tabs. They don't need to melt down the rotor and then take out the rare earths. Makes it so much more recyclable, so much more power dense, so much more efficient. And uh, this, I don't believe a customer has been selected for it. I should mention also three in one with the, um, with the inverter mounted right on the PCB board in here. It's pretty cool. Uh, the uh, silicon carbide. I believe they can do silicon or silicon carbide on this one, depending on cost or primary or secondary axle. I'm falling over. And uh, anything else I should mention about this, Alyssa? It's just amazing. It's basically, again, maybe not as crazy tech as like a Lucid motor, but it's designed to be highly producible and much less expensive. Continuing. Let's go up this way. There's a Karma Rivero over here, plug-in hybrid, DC fast charging, three-cylinder BMW motor up front. Cool car, we've tested it, pretty interesting. There's a Xiaopeng over here with some rotors on the top. Take a look if you can. I don't know, it's called the Aero something. What is it, like Aero? Eh, well, let's just show everyone. Come on over, we're walking anyway. May as well. Here it is. Honestly, they had it here on day one without the rotors on top, and I thought it looked way better. Very Volkswagen XL1 vibes, one of my favorite cars. It's just a concept. We don't need to spend too much time, but damn, if they made something that looked like that without the stupid blades on it, it'd be so much cooler. Really, really, really love it. Uh, by the way, Amazon is here, and Amazon is pretty much positioned to take over the entire customer journey of an automobile. I don't think people realize how... I don't know, well positioned Amazon is to take on the so much expense and uh, purchasing power of the general public from configuring a vehicle to delivery vehicle, uh, delivering a vehicle to you, of course, the sales process, even to the recycling process of a vehicle. Uh, I think people don't know how big Amazon is going into the vehicle space could, could be insane. And of course, they're already a powerhouse and they're being positioned to be even more of a powerhouse in the automotive industry. So don't sleep on Amazon. Uh, I need to learn more about what their plans are, but from my friends in the industry telling me, you know, what they think is happening, it's just insane. Here you have a DAF, we love the DAF, and this is a fully electric cab over truck. Pretty cool. Here on the Packard display, of course, they have Peterbilt in the US. This is the XD electric, just taking a look here. Onboard charger, pretty cool super awesome uh, double axle in the back this thing is pretty neat as well I'm not even sure if this is electric uh, I can ask though one second is this one electric or combustion or? It is combustion, with mild hybrid. combustion with mild hybrid so it has a little electric boost then it does, yeah. ah very no, cool not so much for boosting. okay ah for regen interesting oh cool well thank you for the information appreciate it yeah. So, okay, this is just a, and I think that makes sense for trucks. Of course, not every trucking company is ready to go battery electric or even hydrogen. There's a fuel cell technology over here as well. However, just having that ability to recuperate, to apply power when needed, having an electric boost, at least in combustion vehicles, uh, passenger vehicles makes so much sense. So this is a hydrogen fuel cell class eight. We've done videos on Nikola in the past talking about this type of technology. I'd love to check out check out this truck one day would be super duper cool. Continuing along. I think we're almost to the end of this haul, Alyssa. Holy smokes. Are you getting tired? What? Yeah, she's shaking her head. She's ready to, ready to go home. <laughs> um, okay. This is Lee power or is it U power? Lumos times U power. This is the up van. It's like up dog. What's up dog? This is the U-Power van. I don't think it's in series production yet, but it, it's a cool concept. Take a look, let's just take a look at this. Great design, skateboard chassis, huge space, really huge space, really nice. I'm all for the electric delivery vans. Bring it on, bring it on, especially when they look that cool. What else should we show, Alyssa? There's a Audi Q6 e-tron and uh, the only bit that we can see is right there because the rest is camouflaged. At least no one got the joke on Twitter when I said that. You wouldn't have, okay. Anyway, Q6 e-tron back end. This is a company that does the digital lighting for them. Uh, so really cool, love Audi's design. 
uh, for their prototype wraps, by the way. So I hope you could actually option the vehicle with this prototype wrap because you could do that for the e-tron GT. Lucid Air Pure right here on the AT&T booth. Um, this is the rear wheel drive version of the Lucid Air. I believe 88, just under 90 kilowatt hour battery pack. Really can't wait to test this one. Super duper efficient. I think in the early EPA cycle it was 4.7 miles per kilowatt hour, almost five. And now it's 4.3, 4.4, something like that for 2024. The EPA range estimate testing had changed. I need to research more of it, truly. I don't know all of it. But this one is super duper efficient, should be even better handling, taking some weight off the front, more agile, more fun. Can't wait to have a go in it. This is also the first time I've been able to bring you a Geely branded car. This is the Geely 8, something 8, G8, E8, I think E8. Uh, I have to look at the back to see. They also have an Aston Martin DBX 707 on display here, but this is cool. If you can just peek in, look at the size of the display in this thing. Absolutely amazing. It reminds me of that Neo ES7. Yes, it is the Geely E8. And it's a China spec car with the green license plate. Pretty cool. Um, great to see this one in the US. And I really uh, can't wait to learn more about Geely products. I mean, their own Volvo, Polestar, Lotus, so on and so forth, but just super cool. What else is there to see? There is the Dash by Indigo. Let's go show you guys this one. Little tiny K delivery van, if you will. Love the design. Very cool. Looks like they're doing their own product presentation over here, so I don't want to get in the way, but you just so everyone can see what's going on. There you go. I believe based in Massachusetts and uh, right hand drive, maybe not based in Massachusetts. Don't know anything about it, but I love it. I want it. It's like, it's like, yeah, I think it's K-sized, which is pretty cool. This one's called the Flow. Nice. And they have smart wheels with hub motors. How about that? Uh, there's also a technology over here called Voltec, and they have a robot uh, for just for Tesla, uh, where you can plug in a Tesla UMC, it seeks out the charge port, and interfaces. It's $1,600. It's already on display. Lead engineers over there. Seems very expensive for something that I can just hold on the wall and plug into a car. But uh, there will be applications for fleet and for hospitality where I think it might make sense if they can cut the cost down low enough. Um, I think that's everything in the West Hall, Alyssa. So let's go to the other halls. We have some other clips from visiting the rest of CES. We also went outside and um, then we'll wrap up the video at the end. Guys, we got a pretty cool company I've never heard of before. This is the part of CES that I love coming to, learning about different charging companies. And this is Renova. Uh, in China, I believe they're actually under RCD Group. That's how their chargers are branded. But for their global products, they'll be known as Renova. And uh, actually, Leon over here is a viewer. Hey, Hi, Leon. <laughs> I'm just showing the viewers around. So they have a European uh, charging pile right here. This is 19.2 kilowatt on both sides. So, you know, my suggestion was maybe if it comes to the U.S. market, a slight redesign. But for Europe, we're used to seeing the 22 kilowatt version out on display. They have uh, 32 and 40 amp AC wall boxes. Again, that stuff I'm not so interested. I really love the DC products and they actually have some cool stuff. So this is the Today product. This is either in a 120 or 160 kilowatt version. They have a 30 or 40 kilowatt power module inside that basically adjusts the power. And yeah, okay, so this thing looks like a workhorse. I've seen chargers that look just like this in China. I'm sure it's from the RCD group. However, take a look at some of their new designs. This is looking really nice and up to 600 kilowatts in a distributed split system, which I think is pretty cool. Something you guys may not have seen before actually over here is the Chinese GBT port. So this is their wall mount. It can be 30 or 40 kilowatts depending on the module. And this right here is the GBT charging port. So how cool is this? I got to get one of these one day. It basically looks like type two, but the reverse It's kind of cool, juicy, but we don't have this port in America. Of course, they offer a CCS or a NAX option for all of their chargers. So um, it's a company that will be Buy America compliant. They're going to be putting a manufacturing facility in the LA area. So hopefully we'll see more of them. I'd like to see their new designs. It's a, a wide open market. So many new companies coming to the US. Time will tell who will succeed, who will fail. But, you know, fingers crossed for all of them that everyone can succeed in a new charging market. So that's Renova. That's the first time I've heard of them. And of course, our first tour. Pretty cool. And guys, coming around here, take a look. We have Tesla Model 3 seats in this orb. I figured you would find this kind of interesting, just 
displays using Tesla interiors. Well, I guess if you want a hard wearing light color seat, that's really your option. But I just wanted to take you over this way as well at Solium, company I've truly never heard of, but they say smart city and smart home. But then they also have a uh, EV charging product. Hey there. Uh, and so this is a 60 kilowatt, kind of a cool looking little pill charger over here, if you will. I'm going to ask the guys, see if they can tell me anything about it. And then they also have a 22 kilowatt AC wall box for Europe, but uh, maybe we'll have to see if that'll be adapted for the US. Looks like it's just type two at the moment. And uh, so, yeah, okay, guys, well, I think they're all stuck in a meeting. That's all right. But Star Charge, who we did a full video on, of course, Star Charge. They actually have another booth over here uh, showcasing one of their wall mounted uh, units. Looking pretty sweet. Would like to play around with one of these things. So that's cool. I guess just two booths may as well. Uh, but of course, they went full send on their booth before. And I just saw something over here that looks like a charger. This is uh, Seco, S-E-C-O, ARPA E, building the future. And so what the heck is this thing? So I'm looking at a DC charging dispenser, I'm looking at advertisement. Okay, it says plug in your car, connector type DC. Very interesting. It says connecting. Hmm. Yeah, I guess just a dispenser shows like some information here. There's a camera. Could you explain a little bit about what this does for me, Don? Sure. So we have uh, basically what we're doing is um, we have a compact charger. Uh, it's 100 kilowatt. This is a DC to DC fast charger. Oh, wow. So direct to that's our module. So we're in the RPE booth, mm -hmm. which is Department of Energy. Um, we uh we were multiple grant awardee so we've uh taken our technology from different stages um all the way from the early stage where we had r d money uh from grant awardee all the way to now to a commercialization grant and so our chargers are uh, very compact much more compact than others so that's 100 kilowatt as i mentioned they have, we have two modules, one that's an AC to DC and one that's a DC to DC. What that allows in this compact form is it allows us to kind of deploy it in different forms. So this is an example of a dispenser. Uh, so it has some AI built in. It's um, face recognition. So depending on your, your whether you're sad, happy, whatever, it will change the advertisements. Oh, wow. So it's just showing a little bit of our partnership with Seco as well. Yep. And uh, yeah, that's uh, kind of the overview of uh, what Imogen is about. Well, thank you. Really appreciate the quick tour. It's cool to see this thing and certainly a fantastic program The uh, that the DOE is working with on these yeah. funding of startup ideas and certainly, uh, you know, something we want to keep a close eye on, the projects that come out of this space. So congratulations on getting the thank funding you. for that. That's amazing. And hopefully we'll see, you know, your your compact DC unit installed. Uh, that's really small for 100 kilowatts, yeah, dude. Yeah. So that's that's wild. DC. So we're, we have one that's an AC to DC and the one that's a DC to DC, very, very compact. And the, the goal here, which we know in the in the market through you too, is reliability. So it's all about reliability. This one's 99% efficient, so it has a lot less thermal loss. So with that reduction in thermal loss, reduction in parts, reduction in, in all of that, we're, we're uh, uh, testing our reliability to make a new reliability network out there as we evolve this technology. Amazing. Love to see it. Reliability should be the, the way to lead a DC charger. Absolutely. Glad, glad to take a look here. So we'll keep an eye on this thing. Let us know when uh, your unit gets installed. I want to go charge. Be the first one to plug in. Absolutely, Kyle. Take care. Thanks. Talk about a freaking simulator, guys. Look at this thing. <laughs> Holy smokes. We need this so bad. Full send. That's epic. But I also wanted to come over here and show you the Lincoln Electric charging booth. This is a new player onto the scene. And uh, my friend Michael, you may recognize him from some other videos. They brought along this super cool uh, Scalar Performance SCR1. 
absolutely awesome. But this is a new DC fast charger coming onto the market. You have your power electronics over here, your dispensers over here. You have the Amphenol NAX cable, which is absolutely great to see that they're supporting NAX and CCS, all built in Ohio from Columbus, actually. I was over at the factory not long ago, and it was awesome. And Stephen, would you mind joining? Hey, absolutely. <laughs> Here's a mic for you if you okay. wouldn't mind. You Perfect. can clip that Perfect. on. If I can figure out how to do it, I'll just hold it. Yeah, that's great. <laughs> so so for those of you who don't know, Stephen's you're Mr. Lincoln Electric. Uh, for charging. For charging. There yes. you go. There you go. <laughs> you are the, the charging department lead. Yeah, exactly so. right. Exactly. So maybe you can explain to our audience why launch a new product in a crowded space yeah. with, uh, honestly, very high quality American built, yeah. coming from a welding background. We know it's not going to be the cheapest, but we need Absolutely. reliability. Exactly right. And that's really, that was really the only reason to be here for a company like Lincoln, right? When we looked at this space, the general feeling was, with 25% of all fast chargers broken, 40% of all fast charging sessions fail, there might be an opportunity for a company like Lincoln to bring ultimate reliability, field performance, service, scalability, all those things to the marketplace. So when you look at our product, it doesn't look like any other charger that's out there because it is totally unique from the ground up, built to be a charger by an American company made in America, right? That's so right. that's really the, old, the, the big impetus is really just try and bring stability, reliability, scalability, to the market from an American company. Can you walk us through the power electronics first because this is sure. where your core competencies come from? Absolutely. And then we can get into the design. Ha happy side. to do that. Let's, okay. let's come over here. Oh, uh, oh, let's, uh, sorry. Okay. So, so again, if you're familiar with charging at all and you look inside a charger, our charger doesn't look like anybody else's charger. Never seen anything like this. Exactly. So, what you see, these are 50 kilowatt modules, but they're, everything inside the cabinet is digital. So, what you don't see is a lot of wiring because chargers today are basically analog devices, individual components bought off the shelf, and then point to point wired together. The Lincoln charger is 100% digital. So everything is done at the board level, and it's all digital CAN communication between the modules. And you guys even manufacture your PCBs, right? We manufacture our own boards and have our first inverter we launched in 1977. So we have been doing this for about 50 years, right? Yeah. And I've so, heard stories of your welders getting flooded and still oh, working. Oh yeah, underwater like, during yeah. Katrina and then still working, oh yeah. There's the, yeah. But that's the de really design sensibility about making a product meant to last in the field. Most of the other stuff just isn't designed that way. Okay, so 50 years of history of making industrial inverters that live their whole lives outside. That's what's in the charger. And it's scalable because it's digital we can just add modules, so we can run ourselves out to 20 modules, which would be a megawatt. Wow, so you can do up to one megawatt. Up to one meg, right, That's exactly awesome. right. The power side and doing high power like that is actually fairly easy. It's the pedestal that matters. Okay, right? great, you get tell to us that, about it. Right? So the pedestal itself, what we're showing you here is just our first embodiment, very simple. It is a single session charger, but it has the advantage of having both NACs and CCS1 Mm -hmm. in one device. No so, adapters, no nothing. So it's designed for a single car, but you're giving the option of which cable to choose. Exactly. Okay. And it's just super easy, plug and play, no adapters, no nothing. In the future, multi-session, it's already designed to do multi-session. Okay, okay, and I see someone's got a good, proper, out-of-spec arrival. <laughs> That's how exactly. we like to drive. Exactly, <laughs> so uh, yeah, these, these are just examples of what the screens look like, but it is a touch screen, 15 inch diagonal, but with redundant buttons. So if the touch screen ever were to fail, you can do a complete charging session without ever having the touch having to use the touch screen. Amazing, love to see it. And I also actually prefer the, the Pater option over other yep, options. Exactly. So, yep, exactly, so we use the Pater Apollo IP50, uh, sorry, 65, but we have other options. If you want a chip swipe, we have that, but we love the Pater tap to pay type device. Yeah, same. Um, other things in the, the, the pedestal design, this we call the vault. The vault is a sealed unit that has the electronics. The vault moves up and down on the pole. So if you're mounting the pedestal on a curb like it's shown here, you want to lower the pedestal so it's always ADA compliant. Lower the vault, sorry. If you're putting it on the flat, you raise the vault so it's ADA compliant. A lot of people don't have that ability to be multiple configuration for how the, the charging station is built. Yeah, really, really cool, uber flexible. I can't wait to charge on one for the first time. Really looking we're, forward to that. We're going to get that, make that happen. Yeah, and I think we should come back out because you hosted Charin graciously. That and was we're going to awesome. do it again in June. Oh, amazing. It was a great facility inside, but I really think we should come and film a factory tour or something to Happy show to our it. audience. Anytime you on. want. Well, thank you, Steve. Appreciate it. That Thanks, was Kyle. awesome. Appreciate and, it. Uh, yeah, well, 
keep your eye on Lincoln Electric because you'll be seeing a bunch of chargers. Hey, Michael, I think you've been in a previous video before. So welcome back to YouTube and cool display. Love seeing this thing here for and sure. Here you joined me at another booth. I want to go over to Honda in a moment, but you guys have seen the Bollinger trucks for a while. We're actually at Mullen and Mullen is my favorite car company because they bought Coda. And you guys, I know bought Coda. So, you know, you know you're dealing with a real solid foundation uh, when they bought Coda. So I love that. This is a new car on display. It's the, uh, I have to look, it's an RS something or other, but fully electric. Uh, the, yeah, the Mullen 5 RS seems pretty crazy. Two-speed axle. It's got Volvo tires on the front, BMW tires on the back, but okay, no matter. Looks pretty freaking sick, but I'm not so concerned about this one. Not sure if it'll come to market. Who knows what to think about that, but I am more interested in the Bollinger stuff. So, of course, we've seen Bollinger over the years go from uh, wanting to make these really cool electric trucks that I just fell in love with the moment I saw them to now maybe being a little bit more rational and bringing in some uh, box trucks and also medium and heavy duty, but mostly medium duty uh, electrified uh, sort of transportation vans, if you will, chassis cabs, things like this. They actually use a battery from one, our next energy, which is famous for getting really good energy density. So I'm curious to see some specs on these things. I'm looking at, is this an electric pump back here, electric something or other. Okay, uh, it's a high drop Hydra Pulse. Hmm, is that for braking? I'm not totally sure. Let's just take a look over here. We have, yep, of course, Robert Bollinger. And I know Robert, we've actually been together <laughs> on the beach in California randomly. Uh, long story. Anyway, um, yeah, 279 kilowatt hour, our next energy Aries series battery, 158 kilowatt hours worth of uh, energy, not necessarily power. So maybe they should have me proofread some of this stuff. I can help them with the, uh, you know, the kilowatt hour, the W being capitalized, stuff like that. Okay. Okay. I'm here to help Bollinger. Happy to offer the out of spec proofread before they go live. Uh, but Alyssa, don't you think these things are sick? Wouldn't you love to go for a rip in one? Yeah. I mean, they look really, really great. Oh, thanks. There you go. Yeah. They look great. Um, we like the guys over there too. They seem to be having a lot of fun. Yeah, the and, Bollinger uh, guys are awesome. The thing yeah. is though, Mullen, Mullen's a little, my impression, at I, least up to this point. I mean, I don't really have an impression. Okay, so, that's uh, great. Maybe, yeah, maybe unbi we won't unbiased. tell you much about their history. Yeah, unbiased. Okay. Uh, so, but, <laughs> but these look great. Yeah, the, these things look absolutely awesome. And of course, Mullen has their own uh, vans. You can see over here, box truck, little van, and some other things. I believe those are already for sale in America. But this is what's going on over here. The design of this looks absolutely hardcore. The 5RS, that thing's pretty crazy. We'll see if that ever happens. But this is where the money is. This is what I'm interested in. Some of these box truck uh, technologies and electrified medium duty vehicles. This is what I'm totally into. Guys, we are at the Honda booth. And in just a few weeks, I'll actually be driving the Honda Pro I'm really excited for that. It'll probably be a month until I'm able to present the vehicle to you, something like that. But they've actually brought along a couple concepts. One of them is called the saloon, but it's a coupe because it's only two doors. So maybe they should look up that definition. But here it is. Take a look. Uh, some concept car stuff. I don't want to spend too much time on it. They got big audio going, but here's this. I mean, it looks freaking awesome. It looks like a, like a, a dust buster on wheels, doesn't it? <laughs> yeah. I like it. I mean, what, what more could you want? It's a good looking dustbuster. Good looking dustbuster. That's right. Okay. So it's going. All right. Come on over here. And then we got a, the space hub and the space hub is exactly as you would expect. It is a hub with some space. But look at that super cool concepty stuff. At the end of the day, this means nothing to production. We know it's not going to look like this interesting to see the direction Honda's going, interesting to see them displaying only electric vehicles, especially with, I would argue their prologue being a little bit weak from a spec standpoint. And I need to spend again, a little bit more time driving it, but they basically bought the cheap GM stuff. And then the Acura got the big boy battery out of the Lyric and everything on that old TM platform. I don't know. The back of this looks great though. I mean, I, I, if this was a thing, I would love it. And I also love the Honda E, one of my favorite electric vehicles. So I know Honda can do some really cool stuff if they put their mind to it. I hope they really don't stray too far away from the concept. But again, these are just concept cars. We don't really cover them very much. I don't really like them because I don't want to get too excited about them. I, I would drive that dust buster all day. Let me tell you, that thing is freaking sweet. It's got like Countach headlights up there. Super cool. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm into that for sure. Anyway, uh, do you know what I just found out is how much that Mullen RS is? They, I think they want almost $400,000 for it, 380. I thought it was going to be like 90 grand or 80 grand. I'm like, yeah, oh, it's a premium, nice car. 
$385,000. And then I guess they have like a Mullen non-RS version that's less. I don't know. Mullen. If someone at Mullen could reach out to me and explain to me how you're not sketchy, I would love to learn. Oh, by the way, look at this. The Moto Compacto. We have a full review on our channel of this one, and uh, I'd love to get one of these as well. Uh, surprisingly, they don't fit in the back of the Honda Prologue uh, underfloor storage, which I thought is kind of a missed opportunity, but a really cool uh, piece of um, artwork with wheels, if you will. It's just a really cool modern design, tons of fun. Jordan has a full review on this channel. Check it out. Here at the Kia booth, Alyssa, what do you think? It's nice. They got coffee and croissants. Oh, nice. yeah, and they have the EV9 over here on display, GT line, good spec. There's a big line for people to experience this one. They also have their uh, bi-directional charging. Here's some of the recycled materials used inside the car. Really uh, buzzing in here, actually. It's pretty cool. So, uh, yeah, they also have some concepts outside. Let's go check those out. Here's their EV9 in the blue color. This is the non-matte blue GT line in this particular one. By the way, full EV9 videos already on the channel, and you can see their wall box. I believe the Pulsar 2, which I'm not sure if it's available yet, showcasing some of the vehicle-to-home capabilities of this one, doing, I believe, DC out, which is why they're using the CCS port. I believe it AC charges the car and then DC out, or maybe it's low-power DC. These are the things I would like to know more about, of course, when we're able to review it. Uh, not too much I want to spend on this car we've already done everything with it but take a look here they have some of their smaller concepts which we've shown on the channel before and so here's the ev3 version again we're not sure if this vehicle will come to the u.s market but i hope it does same with ev5 and others and then another one over here the ev4 i want to show you this car and just looking very interesting almost ev6 vibes to me uh, but you know kia is really doing great with design language building cars that can charge fast uh, people seem to love them. There's huge love for the EV9. There's also a lot of distaste for the brand, maybe past reliability issues or the whole USB port stealing thing. Uh, you know, definitely left a bad taste in some owners' minds. But to me, I think the brand is absolutely killing it. I love this design language. I love the way the cars drive. EV9 is definitely the best, or at least up there, three-row SUV on the market, regardless of electric or combustion. It just rocks. So, um, yeah, there you go. Kia booth, absolutely killing it. Doing a great job over here. All right, y'all, let's head up here into Google, see what they got going on car-wise, seeing some Android advertisements over here. How can I be seen near an Android thing? I'm an Apple guy. But uh, <laughs> Alyssa's found herself. Do a, do a twirl on that thing, Alyssa. Go for it. Whoa. <laughs> Whoa. <laughs> awesome let's head on over here i see a mustang mach e gt i'm also seeing a polestar 3 and a very polestar brown color max would love this and uh, yeah loving the new color in the mach e gt performance here looking sweet i guess showcasing some of the android auto integration uh this one running actually android os in the polestar situation i've already done a whole video on the new operating system and of course of the full tour of this car and we've done plenty of mach -E videos so not much really to talk about here but at least wanted to show you these two on display absolutely cool that uh you know, I think Google's doing a great job with UI and getting everything integrated into the cars. I'm just looking to see what else is around here from an EV perspective. There's a bunch of forklifts. We have, I don't know, some cars that are not electric. Kubota's got some stuff in there. I don't know. Out here. Okay. Let's see if we can find anything else. I see a uh, F-150 Lightning over this way. So let's go. Uh, let's go check out what else is going on. There's a Tesla Model Y in this booth over here for Audio Foundry. Perhaps they, they're showcasing some audio situation. And then Conti brought an ID Buzz. So cool. Love to see these things. This is a, of course, Euro spec ID Buzz, short wheelbase. Must have flown it over. And uh, always love seeing this. Great marketing car for them. Love the little details on the Volkswagen badge. Looking awesome. And then, of course, there's an IX over here. Also a Euro, spe Euro specification IX that they must have flown over here. Interesting wheels, never seen these wheels before. What the heck? So they're maybe in-house wheels with some screws. I don't know if that's 
good or not. I got to ask Drew what he thinks about that, but you can see no American side marker on this one. So also Euro spec over here and they have some autonomous driving stuff on some BMWs down that way. Yeah, pretty cool. Um, not that much car stuff going on out here. Yeah, no. Okay. Let's just keep walking around, see if we find anything else. Check this out. I found a Zeker 007 here at the Vallejo booth. They also have a Q4 e-tron and a Lyric over that way. But this is my first time seeing a Zeker in person. And wow, this thing looks cool. Very cool. Loving the details on the back over here. Uh, yeah, I actually can't get around to it, but just this looks awesome. Super nice. I definitely want to get to China and drive some cars for sure. So cool to see a Zeker, Alyssa. That's awesome. Yeah. And if we come over this way, this is the E-Beam axle. We've actually seen Magna's E-Beam axle. So I guess this company, Schaeffler, is that how you say it? Is doing a similar thing, electrifying axles to sell to automakers. How would you know which one to choose? I'm not sure, but I guess they've raised this medium duty f250 f350 up so you can see their axle right there oh i gotta say the magna one probably looks a little bit better integrated i'm not saying that just because they have been a sponsor but uh okay interesting they also have an f150 lightning over here it appears pretty cool and also it looks like they're doing maybe an electric motor for uh some sort of personal helicopter device don't know these are just a showcase of their of course motor technology not so much that they're producing a, that particular technology. But here's a Lightning. I guess they do a subcomponent of this one. Pretty cool to see. And I think that's most of what's outside. Yeah, I think that's what's outside. We've seen Zorova in a couple videos at ACT and other full tours that we've done, but we've never gone in depth to learn about their product portfolio, what they actually do as a company. So I'm joined here by Manny. You are the head of North America for Zorova is my understanding. So I'd love for you to give us a, a full tour of what you guys are doing. Sure, absolutely. So uh, first of all, Kyle, it's a pleasure to be here. Thank you for stopping by. Uh, I've seen your content. You're great at what you do. So Thank you. We appreciate it. So let's start by just walking through here. So the first thing we're showing here is a mock-up of an MCS dispenser. One of the products that we're bringing to the market this year is a product that is a 480 cabinet that will scale to megawatt. Okay. A lot of the products we do are born out of use cases that our customers bring to us. So as we look at electrification, we look at you know, vehicles coming to the market in 2025 that will be MCS, a lot of our customers want to be able to invest in future proofing. So they want to be able to go from a 480 to 1.44 to 2.8 and be able to dynamically power share with CCS1 and Enbridge MCSN. So we got to show the audience MCS because this, sure. is, this is one hell of a connection right here. Does it pop out? Can I yeah, pull yeah, it? You can just okay, pull it out. Great. Okay. Hell yeah. Look at that thing. Juicy. So this is MCS will be rated for up to three megawatt is my understanding maximum. Yes, absolutely. So again, the goal for us is just to make sure that we're delivering products and solutions that fit the market. And the beauty here is being able to scale from 480 all the way to MCS, protect that investment. So we're excited about that. This is a mock-up. There will be another unit out, but uh, I think this is going to be a very compelling value proposition to the market. And roughly the time frame until we see the first installed MCS from you guys? I would say on that one right now, we're already in production with the actual cabinet itself. Oh wow. Uh, but stay tuned for that part of it. So cool. right now the goal here is really to just let the market know that the product is coming you know, to the marketplace and they will have a product that can be future-proof for MCS. So that's really the theme here. Cool, awesome. And you have what's actually kind of different than other charging companies. You've got your own space in the we whole We have our area. own space, yes, yes. It's uh, you know, an opportunity for us to kind of get people away from the show, bring them in here, give them an introduction of what we do. Uh, most companies have seen us at you know, the ACT show, EBS 36. Yep. Uh, but this is our first entry into CES. I think CES is another important show. So. Next year, we will be down on the floor. Okay. But uh, this is an opportunity, at least for us, to bring all of our products in one space and share them with the public. Yeah, it's a cool opportunity to see everything in one room. So you've got this right up front. Yeah, we've got this right up front. This is our new DT240. So, uh, you know, historically, we were maxed out on a standalone at 180, which we have a lot of deployments because, as you can see the sign there, what we really do is we power brands globally. Uh, we're in over 40 countries where we support uh, companies that really want to build a brand around a product line they can trust. We have a very comprehensive product line. But this one here is an example of a partnership we have 
So this is the 240. We've got swing bar cable management, which I think is very Yeah, let's give neat. that a go, actually. You got a NAX cable NAX right cable, here. Correct. Love to see that, that. That was the talk of the town, obviously. Yep. We want to be able to support that. Okay, so we get some nice reach out of this thing, actually. Absolutely. Even though it is quite high, I still think this is more than reasonable. Imagine parking this far away from a charging station. That sure. would be pretty crazy. So, yeah, I think this, this works out pretty well. Yeah, the other thing for this is I think with all of our chargers on DC, we see not only the public space for charging, but fleet. So we can make this unit also in a more industrial unit where we remove the screen mm -hmm. and we just have a display. So a lot of our products not only support this cable length, but we go into a 23 foot cable length where it's more fleet specific. Nice. Or if it's public charging, the orientation may dictate a longer cable. So we want to make sure that we can provide that solution as well. Do you have a NAX uh, solution yet that's public or that you can sell at the moment? Not at the moment, but we're getting close. Okay. So be on the lookout for that. But again, I think yeah. that you have to have an act solution, obviously, yes, totally. for both AC and DC. So yep. uh, right now we're almost there, mm -hmm. but we just want to make sure that we're demonstrating that we are supporting that. You're doing we made it. that announcement yeah. months ago. Yeah, nice work on that. That Absolutely. was good. Everyone needs to go. I mean, the whole country is switching, of course. Absolutely. Um, but but ultimately, there's still our audience is like, put NACs out there right now. Sure. There's no UL NACs cable, yes. as far as I'm aware. Yes. It's, it's it's coming very it's soon. It's coming. It's coming. Yeah. Be okay. on the lookout. Uh, so liquid cooling on all-in-ones? No, right? Yes. Liquid really? cooling on all-in-ones. So okay. you can do max too, liquid cooling here, or yeah. you can do air-cooled. We also support boost mode. Nice. So you're able to boost up to 500 amps. So really... Wow. Boosting 500 amps on an all-in-one. Yes. Because my all-in-one, I'm trying to think, I have the Autel unit. It, that one only boosts to 400 amps. Yeah. We're yeah. boosting to 500 when you're looking at about you know, 104 degrees. Yeah. You can get about 20 minutes at 500 amps. So even in those temperatures, you can get 20 minutes at 500 yes. amps, plus yeah. or minus. But you're, you're derating based on temperature, yeah. not necessarily an arbitrary time. Right. Yeah. So, you know, but it's a good thing to be able to capture that when you're looking at an air-cooled cable. But we yeah. do support liquid-cooled, mm -hmm. uh, nice. obviously H&S, yep. the Bersooner. Why, why them? Because they were the only available, at the time, mm -hmm. uh, unit available with the chiller supporting liquid cool. Now, obviously, you have more entrance in the marketplace. Right. Yep. So we are looking and evaluating a number of them. Mm -hmm. Great. So, you know, I think when it comes to cables, I think that we're really looking at the market to innovate, mm -hmm. obviously. When you're looking at air-cooled, you, know, you look at a 300 amp, 375, they're quite heavy. So I think what we're going to see is a continue in a uh, narrative of innovation from cable makers where the cable gets smaller. Right now, liquid cool is very popular in the public space because obviously it's lighter, you've got more amperage, quicker charging. So I think that's one thing that needs to continue is innovation yep. across the board. Yeah, batteries. immersion cooling's coming, Correct. different technologies. Absolutely. But cool that you guys actually support that in an all-in-one. That's yes. quite unique from my perspective. I really, really like that. Well, I'll tell you, if you like this, let's step over here. I want to show you another exciting product for us is that this is a 480 kilowatt all-in-one. Oh, big boy. Right, big okay. boy in a standalone unit, right? Yeah. The yeah whole... so, so no off-board cabinet. Sorry, That's just correct. to clarify for our audience. That's yeah. correct. It's not a distributed system. So with this one here, the opportunity is to either be a 360 all-in-one or okay. 480. Yeah. This can be modulized. Uh, but configuration-wise, there's flexibility. You can either do single side with two connectors. You can do dual side with four connectors. Or you can do dual side where you have a connector each. So this can really fit in a number of applications, but 480, it's a lot of power. That's it's pretty stable. crazy. I mean, I'm trying to think there are other in Europe, not in the US that I can think of that are four port. I'm thinking Terra 360 as an example. That, that you can do four port. I've never seen one right. with a four port configuration, but yeah. they, they say you can. You can. Um, but that's only 360 kilowatt maximum. This is 480. So this you can actually get some serious power on Absolutely. four cars. Absolutely. So if you have cool. four, you can get you know 120 on each. And all of yeah. our products, from our 120 up support intelligent dynamic power sharing. So we do it in blocks, right? Okay. What so, is that granularity? Is so, it like 40 kilowatt? Absolutely. So? If you're looking at the 240, you're 40, 80, 80, 40. So you can do it yep. at the 40, yep. right? Here it's 120. So you can mm -hmm. do 120. And if you're lucky enough to have a Porsche Taycan or you have a Hyundai Ioniq, yeah, yeah. obviously you get more energy out of an 800 volt. So yeah. for us, again, the theme is to really provide solutions. We're very solution driven for the market. But again, if you look at this, sometimes the real estate dictates that you only have two connectors on one side. Sometimes you can have four connectors if you're doing front and back, right? So again, for us, options. And I think this is one of the unique things about Zerova is we're very flexible, we're agile, we listen intently, and we're really driven by the customer experience that our partners want to bring to the marketplace. 
Yeah, super important. Noticing you're using Pater on this particular one. Do you offer, I mean, Pater seems to be the most reliable of the readers from mm -hmm. my perspective. Um, you know, I'm famously always saying Niax is responsible for a, a large number of failed charging sessions in our market. What's your impression? Do you offer a Niax option? Do you offer others? What do you think? Absolutely. Okay. A lot of this is driven by the customer. Mm -hmm. So for us, uh, Pater has been a very popular solution because this is what our customers are asking for. As you said, it's validated. Yes, Nex has had problems in the past, right? Mm -hmm. We also do UIC. There's a lot of emerging you know, solutions on the market. So for us, we're really agnostic. We want to be able to work with solutions that we can bring to the market, options for our customers. A lot of what we do is driven again by the customer. So we're validated with, I would say, about 57 and growing OCPP backend suppliers, right? Oh, so wow, 57. <laughs> because a lot yeah. of these are very um, vertical specific to hospitality, to fleet. Yep. For us, we want to make sure we're just delivering a solution that fits that particular application. And you're mentioning your customers. I think it's important also for our audience to know that we're never really going to see a Zorova branded charger out in the public. It's going to be branded as Blink or Shell or one of your, uh, you know, um, uh, installer partners or network providers, if you That's will. Yeah. yeah. For us, uh, early on, we determined that you can't really go out in the market, or you shouldn't, try to establish a brand while trying to be a brand partner. You want to make sure that your partners can trust that they can literally bring a brand to the market and you're not going to compete with them on RFIs, RFPs, RFQs, right? So yep. for us, we're really just focused on white label relationships. Again, we do this in 40 countries. And again, if you browse around, this is our part of our resume. We have relationships across a number of different partnerships. So we get to see electrification a little differently, whether it's charging as a service, whether it's multi-unit dwelling, hospitality. We're in that unique position where we get a lot of feedback, a lot of engagement. So again, all we want to do is make sure that we can deliver a comprehensive program to our partners. Yeah, it doesn't matter to you what the heck people want. You're there to deliver the chargers. Absolutely. That's Absolutely. pretty cool. Okay, love this unit. Didn't realize you could do a 480 all-in-one. Yeah, we could do juicy. a 480 all-in-one. Okay. Absolutely. That's, I just want to drop that in the middle of a parking lot and just see what happens. And of course, you can do Chatamo, CCS, NAX, GBT, Type 2, all of the different connections. Absolutely. We support all the standards, right? And right. everything based on, like I said, supporting 40 countries, you have to be able to do that, right? So, yeah, and that's not easy, by the way. That's complicated. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. So yeah. Uh, so we're looking at this. This is standalone. One of the units, before we get to this one here, let's, let's walk through here. So this is a unit that certainly is tried and proven in the industry. Mm -hmm. We see this across a number of relationships, whether it's public charging, whether it's uh, fleet specific. Right now, we're demonstrating here a canopy cable management system for a 23-foot cable. This is very typical in fleet. Okay. Uh, we can do a 15 foot, which is more common for public, mm -hmm. but I think we're one of the only companies that are supporting this kind of application when you have a longer cable. Yeah, I've never seen anything like this. I'm just going to, do you mind if I give it a go? Yeah, is yeah, it, yeah. Uh, go ahead, just pull it out. Okay. And, and our new ones, by the way, they're all based on just dropping in a cradle kind of yep. design. So here I am. Alyssa, take a look at how far I can come out of this thing. And remember that this can be adjusted. So if you right. have it here, you're going to be able to go even further. Right, absolutely. But it's quite strong. It's pulling the cable up. Absolutely. You know, I've seen so many cable management systems that just fall on the ground right, and, right. and die. So that's pretty cool. We also just got one of these installed in Colorado by our house. Really? Yeah, nice. so we'll be nice. testing it out this week, giving it a go. And, and as you can see, this one here is from eSolutions Free to Move. Uh, this is part of Stellantis. Yep. So this is another partnership that we enjoy in the automotive space, more for the dealerships. Yep. So again, I think you'll see this in a number of applications, Volterra. Yep. The list goes on. Okay, right? so cool. Amazing. Absolutely tried and proven. Yep. Uh, as we get to the lower side, uh, this is a 30 kilowatt wall mount. Obviously, mm -hmm. it's mounted on a pedestal. Mm -hmm. We see a lot of this as entry points to charging mm -hmm. uh, on so DC. So cost is a big factor and stuff like that. Cost is a big factor. The other thing we see this is in you know transit for school buses is very common okay. across the board in a number of relationships and we also do it in a mobile unit i'll mm -hmm. say a movable unit right okay yeah this is great for truck stops this is great for just a repair shop mm -hmm. a number of applications we see this in but it's just really taking this and putting it into an environment where you've got about 50 feet in a shop where you can get around. And so this uses the same power module. Same power module, yeah. This, this is a 30, 30 kilowatt, kilowatt power module. Okay. Correct, correct. Very cool. So now let's go over here, and we're going to jump into AC for a moment before we get more into the dispenser side. So here we have three ACs. Uh, you know, this one here is based on the same form factor, mm -hmm. uh, both 48 
an 80 amp. Great. Here we're able to address a number of different use cases because of course we have displays, we have CTEP certification, we have Energy Star, all the above. So we see this deployed in a number of different areas. Mm -hmm. uh, the other day I saw that you know there were even new brand partners I was not aware of because they're through our partnerships. Oh, okay. And, and you may yeah, be partnerships familiar. on partnerships. <laughs> correct. You may be familiar with the Domino's commercial where yeah. they talk about electrification. If you look at the end of that commercial, you'll see that that's a sort of oh, one of these. Amp, right? oh, so cool. that's very, very typical. <laughs> cool. Um, another unit here that we have is another uh, 48 amp, but we're using this for what we call smart residential or residential fleet. Mm -hmm where we're bringing OCPP into the home. Mm. We've got ISO 15118 supported on all these products. Okay. Uh, the other unique thing here is we have cybersecurity built in, right? So we're looking at protecting the actual device itself uh, with encryption. We're trying to keep the bad people out of this charger here. Yep. We also have support for uh, elevation up to 12,000 feet. Oh, great, okay. We actually can do That's good actually, for Colorado. <laughs> correct, minus 40, right? So we're, yeah, you know, we get into colder environment. Yep. Uh, but again, this is for utilities that want to maybe give you a rebate, get into the home. They'll be able to limit power, support mm -hmm. the grid. We've got pass-through bidirectional in here. So you can do plug and charge on this. You can do plug and charge. So if you have you know, a condo parking space yes. and your pesky neighbor over here keeps plugging yes. in there, whatever, yes. you can be like, nope, my Lucid supports plug and charge. Sure. There you Absolutely. go. And it only locks to that car. And then you don't have to carry an RFID for home Correct. charging. Correct. Nice. And all of these products support auto charge as well. Obviously, mm -hmm. there's not you know, the security side of that. Yep. So you support Mac ID as well as 15118 certificate. Absolutely. Cool. So again, this can fit in a number of spaces. If you look at residential fleet, a great way to do you know, reimbursement where you can connect the vehicle to the charger and make sure that you know, you're getting reimbursed for that specific vehicle. So again, we see a lot of different use cases. If you add a 4G module, now you're in a commercial application. So again, just answering different use cases. I like that. That's kind of cool. I just kind of like how basic and industrial it is. Yes. Not all charging needs to be sexy or whatever. We just need charging to work Absolutely. and be reliable. Absolutely. Um, actually, quick question about the reliability. Mm -hmm. How does the service network work? How does, you know, what what is Zorova doing? Because my understanding of Zorova is a lot of people are going to you because your price points are amazing, especially when we're talking about these, you know, 120 kilowatt units. Mm -hmm. I mean, they're just seemingly priced really well. But then how's the reliability and service? I don't have any personal experience with it. So sure. yeah, what can you speak to on that? Well, I think fortunately we haven't made it to a lot of these LinkedIn and YouTube videos where chargers are problematic. They're not working, right? I haven't seen it yet. Exactly. Yeah, yeah, so, yeah. so, you know, I would say if you look at the breadth of our partnerships, that really defines who we are in terms of reliability. Sure, I think we're cost effective. That's the way I would frame it. But mm -hmm. a lot of that is because we have factory mentality. Our parent company has been manufacturing products for over 51 years. We have factories in you know, China, uh, Vietnam, Japan, uh, three in Thailand, Taiwan. We're now in Arizona, so we're doing so Nevi and America Baba. Stuff, correct, right? correct. Cool. But I think that uh, from a reliability standpoint, we enjoy a very good track record right now. If you spoke to some of the companies doing a service of maintenance, I think that they would concur with that. Great. Uh, the other thing is we are located in Fremont, California, in the America, so we have an FAE team there, very comprehensive one. Uh, we carry parts there. Most of our partners like to look outside for SLA agreements, mm -hmm. and so they're partnered with a number of different companies. And then providing you can just that. train them on your chargers. Correct. Well. Yeah. We train them. We bring them into Fremont. We can do it online, in person. Right. But we are going to be offering a comprehensive set of SLAs coming up probably in April. Okay, cool. So this is something I'm looking forward Maybe to. Maybe we should do a video on that. That could be kind of interesting. Absolutely, yeah, yeah. absolutely. Uh, moving forward here, this is just, you know, part of our dispensers here. Uh, this is a dispenser for our 360 distributed system and also our 480, right? So okay. the good thing about our tower cabinets is you have a number of dispenser options. This is one where you've got a 21.5 inch screen, built in cable management. You can do tool liquid cool dry here, screened within a screen. So you can also uh, use you know, the content side to use it for advertisements, media. So this is just really for a demo right here. Yeah, but no, but is, that's cool. I, I, it's cool that your demo works. Absolutely. <laughs> yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Here's yeah. another yeah. one here where you want to monetize more in a high traffic area. Uh, it could be a C store. It could be any number of applications, a public space. Mm -hmm. So you have two dual 50 inch screens. You have yeah. the transactional side coming out of here. Yep. Again, it's all about options. We're also doing a roof depot where you have space limitations. Okay. We also are doing a very slim line for, oh, cool. again, when you have space limitations. So, yeah. again, the theme here 
solutions, yeah. very solution driven. If I had this, I would just make people watch out of spec videos while they charge. I like that, <laughs> I like that, good idea. Yeah. Uh, now we're coming to this side where we're actually looking at what I consider our gift to the grid. When you're looking at being able to aggregate energy from a number of sources, whether you're going through battery storage and you're tapping in the meter at none peak, mm -hmm. and then you're offering it at better rates at peak. Right, yeah. There Seven you go. Out, yeah. But the other side is you can aggregate from you know solar, uh, a number of applications. We have some of these live uh, in different areas with our partners, but the goal here is that you bring it into battery storage, you go through PCS, you know, power conversion, yep. you go into our power cabinet, which is 180. Mm -hmm. yep. You can run them in parallel for 360, yep. and this converts from 300 to 825, and then you go straight out to a dispenser delivering 150 to 950. So Right, so you can right. basically have this whole situation of... DC, DC. Yep, and then you have a sort of microgrid solution yes, at that point. Yes, absolutely. You're and supporting a microgrid. Yep. And again, we're seeing a lot of microgrids where you have skids going out there. Mm -hmm. A lot of our chargers also support it in mobile applications where you have a trailer. We've even seen one where you have a capstone turbine. Mm. In a number of applications where yeah. you're doing infrastructure where you don't have infrastructure, yeah. quick to deployment. Yeah. So uh, there's a storyline there. So again, I think as, as you look around, it's really about the theme, powering brands globally, being able to bring, bring a broad selection of products to the marketplace for our partners mm -hmm. and supporting them in over 40 countries. Amazing. Well, Manny, this was super awesome. Really appreciate all the depth of knowledge and how you're working with other brands. Thank uh, you. Me personally, I've gone from knowing little about Zorova to quite a great. bit more. Great. Uh, so I can't thank you enough for the time. That Fantastic. was really great. And great. Good, good luck at the rest of the show. Absolutely. And we're looking forward to continuing this partnership. Yeah. Uh, again, you do a great job. Thank I you. think you have a great following. So thanks. Looking forward to the so next more session. Zorova videos coming, I guess. Absolutely. Could be cool. But hey, if I roll up at one and it doesn't work, you're getting that video. Absolutely. <laughs> I expect that. Yeah, Thank you okay. so much. Thanks. Thank you. Appreciate it. And there you guys go. That's been a CES 2024. I'm sure I missed a few things there, but I tried to get all the charging stuff, all the electric car stuff that you guys would have loved to see. It definitely feels maybe a little bit less exciting than in years past from my impression, but probably even more useful to attend if you're in industry. It's almost less crazy forward thinking ideas and more tangible product, more stuff that's on sale. And it definitely feels more like a trade show than a future display of stuff that will never happen. So I'm very pleased with the show this year. It's been great seeing a bunch of viewers. It's been great meeting with a bunch of companies. It's been great showcasing a bunch of products. And um, can't thank you enough for watching this video. We'll see you on another one again soon. Bye-bye. Thank <laughs> you.